Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this time I'm going to talk about six or even maybe seven keywords that you never had to use in C-Sharp. Well, probably. The reason why I say you never had to use them and you'll see as we go is that they're very niche in terms of what they do. I'm only going to briefly explain each one of them because they can get very advanced the more you dive deeper into them. But I think there is value in knowing about them, at least that they exist and what they do on the very surface level. If you want to, of course, go deeper on them, you will always find documentation that Microsoft has written for those keywords specifically. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and ring the same notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's go straight into the code. And what do we have here? Well, I'm going to be running them through this program. And the first thing I have is a combination of keywords, the checked and unchecked keywords. Now, let's just take a look at this. Let's say I have an unsigned integer and the value is the uh, max u int value. Uh, an unsigned integer is an integer that is only, con only consists of positive numbers. So basically there is no maximum of 2 billion something because there's no negatives. You have 4 billion something. So that's the main idea. Now, if I say this and print li right line and I just run this program, let me just quickly change my program.cs and I run it, what I should see in the console is just the maximum numbers. Now, what do you think will happen if I do this? What would you expect the, the code to do in runtime? Um, you can leave a comment before you see it, or you can just keep it in, in your head, but now I'm going to run it and let's see what the value is after the incrementation. Remember, we set it to the max. And now it's zero. But why it's zero, right? Well, it's sort of like the, is it called a tachometer? The thing on your car that uh, counts the kilometers or miles, and once you exceed the maximum number, it just loops around to the zero value. This is basically what's happening. And if you wanted to prevent that, then you would use the checked keyword. And if you use the checked keyword, then uh, once you run this code again, let's see what happens. It goes boom. It says arithmetic operation. Um, a result is an overflow so you have an overflow exception because you cannot increase over the maximum value and this feature i've only seen it actually when i was decompiling link code uh, and i saw that some of the bits there were checked um it's very much niche but it's one of those things that like of all the words that we're gonna see in this video that's probably the one you should care about and know how to use because you might actually need to use it you know you might need to handle an exception when an overflow happens on one of your values and you need to deal with it um, and obviously unchecked will negate um, the, the the checked this is not the only way you can use it by the way um, you can even do things like this where you can have uh, a checked scope here and you can wrap it in parentheses and then that will also throw um, but yeah you can see that you can nest the checked and unchecked and by default it's unchecked and unchecked will negate the outer checked uh, context and it will just increment it to zero again so out of all the ones we're gonna see that's probably the one you might actually have to use at some point if you're not already using it now the next one is the unsafe keyword what if I had told you, and for some of you this might be a completely new thing, uh, that C Sharp actually has pointers, similar to how C and C++ does. C Sharp does in fact have pointers, but it is also a managed language, right? We have the garbage collection, automatically collects all the dangling things. So why? Well, because you might have to do some very low level stuff and you might need to talk to addresses directly you probably never had to deal with unsafe code. Um, obviously, unsafe code will be unmanaged, but you can write it. And let's see how we can do this. First, we need to mark either the method or the context. So we can either say unsafe here, or I could even say unsafe here in a, in a block. I'm going to go with the method one. And unsafe has to be enabled on the compiler level, on the project level. So I'm going to allow Rider to add it. And for reference, you can actually find that as a setting in your CS project, it's the un allow unsafe blocks. Um, and once we do that, let's say we have an integer, uh, which is called Snoop Dogg. Um, and the value is 420, because of course it is. Uh, I type Snoon, that's more like a Snoop. Here we go. And now let's get a 
pointer to that integer's address. And we can do that by saying int star pointer equals ampersand snoop dog. And now I got a pointer to the address of the variable. This might look like magic to you, but it actually works. And let's let's take a look at this. Uh, in fact, before I print anything, I'm going to just change this here in the program.cs and I'm going to stick a breakpoint and show you what this looks like. So we create the integer and now we have a pointer and you can see that the pointer has this hex looking value, which is actually the address of where this thing is allocated. Now, you can do quite a few things syntax wise here, but a few that I find interesting is that you can just say the int value is, um, and you can get the actual value from the pointer by adding the asterisk in front of it and saying asterisk pointer. You can also get the string representation value and say the string value is, and say pointer, and then <laughs> this is valid C sharp. Uh, I'm laughing because the first time I saw this, I'm like, another arrow function. But no, this is actually sort of representing a dot. Um, those of you familiar with uh, C would think that this is fine. But if you just write C sharp, this might be a bit weird. But yes, this will actually get the string value of the value of the property. And the console.write line, the address value is, and we can uh, cast to an integer on the pointer and print those things. And if I let this run, you'll see that we have 420 from the pointer value, the uh, string from the to string, and then the actual address integer by the pointer itself. Would you have to deal with this realistically? No, really, you probably never would have to. But I think there's value in knowing about it. And we're only going to get weirder from here because we're going to add on top of this feature with the next keyword, which is the fixed keyword. So like like I said, the code that you write in, in unsafe is unsafe code. Um, but let's say that you have something like this, a private string text here. And it's my name. Uh, so we have Nick over here. A class level reference type, for example, the string, uh, will be allocated on the heap. But I might need to do something with this in unmanaged code. And really, a string is just an array of characters. I cannot, however, do this and say uh, pointer equals ampersand text. Because I cannot guarantee that this reference to the string won't be relocated. I'm confusing you. I cannot guarantee that the reference that I'm getting of the address of this string won't be relocated during garbage collection. I know it's weird, but imagine that each character of this string is allocated in a single location and I need to do something with it and I need to guarantee that the garbage collection won't move it around. How can I do that? Well, that's where the fixed statement comes into play. And fixed is another one of those things that is pretty unsafe. And I can enable this if I say unsafe here, of course. And now I can deal with this text with knowing that it is pinned in the address. Its characters, the characters of this string will be there and I can do stuff with them. And here's an example. I could say uh, var name equals string dot empty. And then I can get a pointer and then loop around that and say, as long as this is not null, then let's take that and append it to the name. So name is the value of this character. And then let's move to the next address because it's four characters next to each other. And I want to move from one address to the other to read every character. I know this is confusing. All you need to know is fixed will pin the thing in the memory, but I want to show you how it actually works as well. Um, and not just call a few things and call it a day uh, and say the name is name. And now if I run this and I actually need to update the program.cs, if I run this, 
the name is Nick. And if we actually debug this code, which I think you'll find more interesting, let's take a breakpoint here, then you can see that the text is there. Now we have the pointer to the text. We initialize the empty string and then we use that the value is not. It, you can actually see that it's the character n and we just append it by getting the value incrementing to the next address i and you can see the name being built i will update you later Ryder. it's fine you can see the name being built and now we just print it so yeah fix will pin a reference type in where it's allocated so you can do something with it and not relocate it now the next one is the size of a keyword and you might have used this before but this falls again under the unsafe code stuff so you might not have used it but it's pretty straightforward um, you can use size of to get the size that a specific uh, type will use when allocated so if i say size of a byte it will print let's just say this right line the size of a byte is size of byte and if i run this you'll see that the size of a byte is one however the size of can only be used with unmanaged types so you cannot use like i don't know even this uh, size of example you cannot just use this you, you're gonna get an error saying you cannot take a managed type and actually print the size of it which means we can actually make a method called public static unsafe void display size of t but if i want to do that and let's just say the size of and here have the type so type of t is size of t then you actually get a seven key what you didn't know about probably for free we have to constrain this t and say where t is unmanaged and now we can actually use that which means i can just say display of or display size of uh, byte i can display the size of uh, let's say boolean or bool integer and so on and so forth so if i execute this we are getting the size of those things another interesting thing is that if we had a struct so public struct let's say a point in space in 3d space so what does a point in 3d space have it has an x a y and a z then because a struct is an unmanaged type you can actually use size of on it so point goes here printing it and it's three doubles as you can see so eight bytes each 24 bytes and if i was to just show you the uh the double as well how much memory you allocate for that the size of double is eight so that is another set of keywords that you probably never have to use because it's again very niche right why do you need to know in normal code you probably wouldn't you have to be doing very low level stuff to actually need to do anything with that and then last but not least we have the stack alloc example you might have seen a pattern here it's mostly around unsafe code and memory allocation this one is actually safe code so you don't have to worry about that but let's take a look at the stack alloc keyword so the stack alloc keyword has been around for a long time but now with uh, spans it's actually quite more relevant and you can have something like that where you have a span of an integer and let's say you have some numbers and you create a, a stack alloc int array uh, where you have three characters four two and zero now what does stack alloc do well it's in the name it allocates the thing that you created in the stack instead of the heap and the question is why? Why would you do that? 99.99999% of the time, you don't need to do that. You shouldn't do that. Um, but stack alloc comes with a lot of uh, things that when it comes to performance, like insane levels of performance, like CPU cache hits, matter level of performance, then you might want to consider. If I was to use that part of the code, it would look something like this, where I'm just... Um, iterating over the uh, array that i just created uh, the span of integers and if i am to change it here and execute it um, and i run this with a breakpoint here you'd see that we have the uh, the array which is allocated using stack alloc and then iterate create the this which uh, coincidentally sums up to 420 
and it says the result was 420 with this array allocated in the stack. Here's the thing, using stack alloc to allocate things will create less load on the garbage collector because stack alloc, once it is out of scope, it will automatically get disposed. You, you won't have to wait for the garbage collection to find something and then just delete it because nothing refers to it. It's also faster to allocate in general than a heap array. Um, I say in general because there are some nuances around it, but I won't dive deeper into those because we're going to go way, way off. Now, the good thing about it is that it's very secure because it has things like buffer overrun detection baked into it. And once something goes over it, uh, it will actually automatically shut down. So it's pretty safe to use. It's very performant, but it's very niche. The thing about it is that it can greatly decrease the chances of getting a cache miss because of locality of data. But the thing is, if all the engineers that write C-sharp were like 10 million, then the number of them that would actually have to use this, that they write code that needs this, is very, very slim and low. Um, I've seen in some cases where you have something like this, where you just want to allocate uh, a span of bytes. What you theoretically could do, um, and I can just say bytes here, is you can say numbers.length less than 128, because it's small enough, in fact, equals to 128. And if that's the case, then use stack alloc to allocate a byte array for the length. And if that's not the case, then allocate a regular byte array. However, realistically, you, you shouldn't think about it. This is more about knowing it exists, and maybe benchmarking and entertaining the idea of justifying using it, but quite honestly, I am not using it. I'm not using any of those features, um, but I think they're good to know about. I totally understand that this is probably very advanced and very niche content, but I find great joy in actually exploring those things because who knows when you might ever get to the point where you're like, yeah, I think I need to use Takalog or whatever. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.